This is going to be much more of a reaction than a breakdown for the simple reason I don't know as much about Wolfpack because I didn't get to visit the set and Jeff has been way too busy getting everything ready for the 26th to really talk about it much. So I'm going into this having read the original pilot script, the one they had before Sarah Michelle Geller joined the cast. Most of that pilot remains, but the part of the fire investigator, Kristen Ramsey, has been beefed up considerably in keeping with the level of star power and name recognition she brings to the project. That being said, I probably know some stuff you don't know, so spoilers are possible. The first episode and the trailer opens with Armani Jackson as Everett on a school bus. Everett is visibly trying to calm his nerves. Now, according to the script I read, he has a veritable thesaurus of anxiety issues and had, just before this moment, been on for a televisit with his therapist. And as he's trying to calm down, all hell breaks loose. Interesting thing here about these animals going nuts. Jeff Davis actually wanted a scene like this in the Teen Wolf pilot, but the special effects for his vision were just out of reach. Instead, we got this little jump scare with Scott McCall. Now, though, Jeff has a bigger budget, and the effects are way easier to get with good quality than they were back in 2010, so Jeff finally gets his crazed animals attacking pedestrian scene. A wonderful sucked back into the smoke thing there with actor Rio Mangini. And lots of back and forth between Bella Shepard's Blake and Everett, cluing viewers to the fact that this is their story at this point. The California wildfires was Jeff's inspiration for this whole new world. The original Wolfpack books also started with wildfires, but Jeff has expanded on that idea quite a bit. What's happening to us? What are you doing out here? Then we skip way ahead in the story to the meeting in the woods between Everett and Blake and siblings Harlan and Luna, played by Tyler Gray and Chloe Rose Robertson. Ah, the mysterious phone calls. These tend to move both Everett and Blake along in the story. It's a bit of a MacGuffin, but it's still kind of cool. In case you didn't catch it, the voice says he has to find you to kill you before the next full moon. The script I read gave no indication who is making those phone calls. So yay, it's a mystery. You want to tell them everything? All the secrets that could get us killed? Okay, so they're setting up Harlan to be the skeptical, less enthusiastic older sibling. But actually, he and Luna are twins, if I'm remembering this right. Now it's their secret, too. Can I just say I love these eye effects? It's full of depth, and the increased size really reads as animal. We're part of a joint task force investigating the wildfires. We're looking for any of the kids who are on that school bus. I think it can help you. Okay, Kristen Ramsey is being very much Dana Scully here to me. You'll see why in a second or two, but we have here our central mystery for the adults in the show, which is who started the wildfires. Oh my God. We're gonna get you out of here. Well, I don't think it's a seven foot tall monster. But you're not so sure it's a bear either. So there you get the split in the mysteries. You've got the kids and Rodrigo Santoro as the twins' father, Garrett, who knows there's some monster to blame for everything that's happening. And then you have skeptical Kristen Ramsey, who thinks a teenager must have set the fire, while other people must have been attacked by a bear. It is a very cool dynamic, and the tension between the Brazilian telenovela and movie star Santoro and Geller is palpable here. Kids, 
Then we get some cool shots of the kids. Harlan is getting busy at a party with some random, and Everett is coming to grips in the bathroom mirror. Then a little sexy time with Blake and Everett. That's a little bit of a disappointment for me. I get that extreme circumstances often lead to people pairing up, but I really wanted a little more getting to know you time for this group. This scene with Santoro, as I first thought when it showed up in the teaser, is apparently a flashback to when he found the twins. Silver is apparently going to be a big deal. Here we have a couple of silver bullets, and later we see Everett dipping a knife into what appears to be silver. We've got some romance and some dead bodies. Kind of a Jeff Davis signature there. So this is how it starts. Get fangs, get claws. Here we get another look at those effects with Blake's voiceover about fangs and claws. The eyes are just stunning. Get fangs, get claws, and then we start killing people? This is kind of hard to see, but if you look closely, you can see the legs and a very large hand of some creature dragging this poor guy off into the woods. I cannot wait to see the rest of that. What are you worried about? What keeps you up at night? We've well, never killed anything before. You've never had a back before. Key takeaways for me from the trailer, the whole thing looks beautiful. The lighting, the sound design, that was some cover version of Leanne Rhymes' Can't Fight the Moonlight. I have no clue who it is, but it's pretty awesome. As I mentioned, the effects look good. It has a very cinematic feel, and my initial comparison of the show to Euphoria still holds up after seeing more of this world. If I have a concern about the whole thing, it's that I know what casting a Buffy-caliber star can do to a production. Trying to revamp an established concept as a vehicle for a celebrity face can be disastrous. But, according to my conversations with Jeff, he and Geller were simpatico from the very beginning. They were besties the moment they met. He did indeed write additional scenes to flesh out the arson investigator character and spotlight her a bit more. But the overall tone and story, that is, real teens facing real werewolves, remains in everything else that I've seen. 